as above, so below, and as within so without, these two idioms are old wisdom. They both come right out of secret societies, such as Freemasonry and the Rosicrucian Order, but they actually go back much farther in time to when Enki taught secrets of the universe to a selected elite of humans, eons ago, in the first secret societies on Earth, such as the Brotherhood of the Snake. In previous videos, we have discussed narcissism in daily life and in society, and we've touched on the cosmic origins of this problem, as well. Now, we want to connect the dots and present a picture for you to consider. In the Westbanner Papers, WPP, the story about cosmic narcissism was actually told, although the term narcissism was never used. Lucifer, aka Enki, son of the Queen of Orion, in his pride and jealousy, rebelled against his mother and his stepfather, Khan Enlil, erroneously also called Enyo. In the reality we live in, we could say that Enki is the father and archetype of narcissism. As we've mentioned before, true narcissists need energy supply from mother souls in order to survive. They literally suck out our energy, and they need our energy just as much as we all need food and water. Bram Stoker, who wrote Dracula, knew a thing or two, narcissists are no less and no more than vampires. They need soul energy as much as we need food and water, or they'll succumb. The members of the Alien Invader Force, the AIF, have no creative energy of their own, they were stripped of this a long time ago and became totally dependent upon us for their own survival. In the WPP, and here on YouTube, the experiment has been discussed. The Divine Feminine, whom many associate with God, the Creator, Source, the all that is, etc., but is actually feminine in nature, created this universe in order to experience new facets of herself by splitting herself into smaller units, who eventually became us. All souls in this universe are here to explore, expand, and experience life from their own perspective, with free will to create and make choices. By doing this, we expand the awareness of the Divine Feminine, who thus learns more about herself and her potentials. As things progressed in the Ka, a name for the entire universe, the Queen of Orion, who is the direct manifestation of the Divine Feminine, wanted to create a new experiment. She wished to experience herself on a deeper level, so she manifested herself in at least two planets in this solar system, Tiamat and Mars. Tiamat, in the Titan War, was blown up, and a piece of this gigantic planet, on which the original humans dwelled at the time, became Earth. Mars was completely destroyed and depleted of life, as well, during this war, from having been part of the human experiment too. The purpose with the experiment was to create a harsh environment on these two planets, Diomat and Mars, to see if the beings that were set to live there could overcome the obstacles and graduate from the experiment with more love and compassion than before the experiment began. This is all explained in the WPP, but we recap it here as background material. The original human soul group that I call the Nam Luyu in the WPP, includes many of us who are still here today. We were created as the Queen Soul Splinters, in other words, we might consider that we are immediate parts of her, and she is our common oversoul, through us, she is also learning more about herself, and ultimately, the Divine Feminine, which is everything, learns from us humans and our experiences. We humans are creatures of nature. We could say, from a metaphysical aspect, that Tiamat, a manifestation of the Queen, gave birth to the human soul-slash-mind-slash-body complex. When the universe was young, wars and conquest were common in the universe, and the Queen herself was engaging in this, as well, which is discussed in the WPP. As always in war, it creates trauma, and although the Queen is the direct manifestation of the Divine Feminine, she is still participating directly in the endeavors here, and she is not immune to emotional trauma and pain. As war and conquest continued, she realized that this is not the best way to progress, and she stopped her conquest. Instead, she focused on a more compassionate and loving part of herself, and thus, she implemented peace and harmony in her empire. However, not all star races followed her example, 
and war and conquest continued in other regions of this universe. Likely, because of this, the Queen decided to create her experiment in this solar system to see if souls could learn important lessons from it. If so, she considered expanding the experiment across the universe. The Queen has many genetic offspring. We don't know very much about most of them, but we know that some of her daughters were put on the throne in certain star constellations as overseers, preventing warlike star races from running amok. However, more is known about two of her sons, in the Sumerian texts called Enki and Prince Enlil, or more accurately named Prince Ninurta. We also know that Enki is the eldest of the two, and he was therefore meant to inherit the throne of Orion one day. However, this changed, and Prince Ninurta became the successor of the throne instead, in spite of his younger age. This created a great wound in Enki, who started acting out in a very narcissistic manner and rebelled against his mother and stepfather, which led to that Enki and his rebellious army were cast out of heaven, the Orion Empire. In an attempt to seek revenge, the rebels later invade our solar system, destroyed Diamat and Mars, and defeated the Mi'kmaq warriors stationed here and led by Prince Ninurta, who was also present. After the victory, the rebels terraformed a piece of Tiamat that had been thrown out of orbit during its destruction, and this chunk of the original planet became Earth. Through genetic experiments, Anki and his scientists created a much smaller version of some of the creatures that had inhabited Tiamat because Earth is a much smaller planet than Tiamat was and required smaller beings to inhabit it. Thus, Homo sapiens eventually came into existence, and Anki and his son, Marduk, have ruled this planet behind the scenes from a lower density ever since and manipulated us into becoming the confused human soul group we are today. All this is mentioned in the WPP, but let's think about this for a while and try to connect the dots. If you have listened to all our videos on narcissism up to this point, you have a concept of what narcissism and codependency are. You also have a concept of the terms golden child and scapegoat, where the golden child is the narcissistic parent's favorite child, while the scapegoat is the neglected child, who often rebels, either as a child or in adolescence. If we play around with this concept, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to look at Enki as the scapegoat and Prince Ninurta as the golden child, who was given the succession to the Orion Empire and a title of Archangel, the commander of the Orion Mike Mock Warriors, only answering to Khan Enlil and the Orion Queen, his parents. Prince Ninurta remained loyal to his parents, and he looks up to both of them, while Enki, the neglected child, who lost his power because of his emotional wounds, stemming from neglect and rejection from his parents. It fits the picture. Anki became so bitter and revengeful that he developed a narcissistic personality, although he might not be a full-blown narcissist, regardless of how strange this sounds. If we research Anki's character, we find some signs of true remorse and regret, while Marduk, his son, shows no such signs at all and could probably be diagnosed as a full-blown narcissist and psychopath. As one of my ET contacts told me, Anki might still be redeemable, while Marduk is not. However, Anki is still so obsessed with being a victim of rejection and abandonment that he refuses to see the wood for the trees. In this line of thinking, the question evidently arises, does narcissism originate with Anki and Marduk, or is there a bigger? cosmic plan behind this.